go ahead and start just 10 seconds early. That's all right, everybody else. Well, welcome to the Tenem Ray service. It's a night in which we are gathered to reflect and to remember the night in which our Lord and Savior, Jesus, was crucified, was killed. In a time in which we often live in uh, continual sound, it gives us a moment to stop in silence and in reflection. It gives us time to pause before we sprint ahead to Sunday morning and Easter. The service tenebrae means the service of the shadows. As we continue through the night, through scripture reading and through song, the lights will continue to come down as the lights and the candles are extinguished until the very end of the service, which the scriptures read of Christ's crucifixion. At that point, there will be complete darkness. I'll sit in the darkness for just a few minutes. Before then, I will come back and uh, invite you to leave the sanctuary. Someone asked, well, what do we do afterwards? If you've not been through one of these services before, you know that you leave in this kind of weird, heavy state. And sometimes it's, what, do I, what should I do now? And it's kind of up to your family. I know some have gone back and maybe watched the reenactment of a movie of Christ's life. Some have just gone on to family life and rhythms. We know there's kids to, to get to bed and other things to be done tonight. And others, they gather at home and maybe have a conversation. What, what that means to you, what, what stirred within you. I think all of these are appropriate as we will leave tonight with the stirring, with the remembering, with a reminder of this love of God that went so far that it went to include the crucifixion of His only Son. And that's why we've been gathered here. I would invite you at this time, if you haven't already, to silence your, your cell phones again as we go into this time of, of quiet and dark uh, that we just invite you to do that. Would you stay with me to uh, sing this first song and then afterwards we'll invite you to sing. Let's sing with me. Thank you. 
Because Jesus had came to the garden. He often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the garden, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and the Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied, I am he. Jesus said, and Judas the traitor was standing there with him. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they said. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled, that I have not lost one of these you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servants, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malachus. Jesus commanded Peter, put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup my father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers with its commanders and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Anas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who advised the Jewish leaders that it would be good if no, if one man died for the people.
Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the servant girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. You aren't one of this man's disciples too, are you? She asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold, and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby slapped him in the face. Is this the way you answer the high priest? He demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Meanwhile, Simon Peter was still standing there warming himself. So they asked him, you aren't one of his disciples too, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the garden? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, a rooster began to crow.
Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews, and they slapped him in the face. Once more Pilate came out and said to the Jews gathered there, Look, I am bringing him out to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jewish leaders insisted, we have a law, and according to that law, he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? he asked Jesus. 
But Jesus gave no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me, Pilate said? Don't you realize I have power either to free or to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free. But the Jewish leaders kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. <laughs> when Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat as a place known as the stone pavement. It was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about noon. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified.
Jesus away. Carrying the cross by himself, he went to the place called Place of the Skull, in Hebrew, Godlotha. There they nailed him to the cross. Two others were crucified with him, one on either side, with Jesus between them. And Pilate posted a sign on the cross that read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. The place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek, so that many people could read it. Then the leading priest objected and said to Pilate, change it from King of the Jews to he said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate replied, No, I have written what I have written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robe, but it was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said, Rather than tearing it apart, let's throw dice for it. This fulfilled the scripture that says, They divided my garments among themselves and threw dice for my clothing. So that, they, so that is what they did. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Colossus, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to this disciple, Here is your mother. And from then on, his disciple took her into his home.
Jesus knew that his mission was now finished. And to fulfill scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, it is finished. Then he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It was the day of preparation, and the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies hanging there the next day, which was the Sabbath, and a very special Sabbath because it was Passover. So they asked Pilate to hasten their deaths by ordering their legs to be broken. Then their bodies could be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water flowed out. This report is from an eyewitness giving an accurate account. He speaks the truth, so you also may continue to believe. These things happened in fulfillment of the scriptures that say, not one of his bones will be broken, and they will look on the one they pierced. Afterward, Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus because he feared the Jewish leaders, asked Pilate for permission to take the body of Jesus. When Pilate gave permission, Joseph came and took the body away. With him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night. He brought about 75 pounds of perfumed ointment made of myrrh and aloes. Following Jewish burial custom, they wrapped Jesus' body in the pieces with the spices. The place of the crucifixion was near a garden where there was a new tomb never used before. And so, because it was the day of preparation for the Jewish Passover, and since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. Son. 
sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble. death enters into God through his son. And we leave into the darkness of night not under the curse of God but under the vastness of the love of God. A love that would go so far to allow death and God forsakenness to enter to God Himself. So I invite us now that we might leave tonight underneath, underneath the shadows of death with the hope with the hope that Sunday's come. But may we leave the sanctuary in the silence and the remembrance of not only the death 2,000 years ago but also the dark spots that fill our community, our county, our state, our country, and our world. May we be reminded as we leave of the darkness that's still around us now. And you go to the peace of God. You are just Wait just a second as the lights will come on and we can leave safely.